Hello, welcome back to Brand Sushi Life Coding. In this episode, I'll be doing an improvisation using spread chalk, geometry notes, and maybe animation notes. All right, so let's get started. So when people ask why, <coughs> why am I learning spread chalk? Uh, because we already have like something like geometry notes. Because spread chalk has a lot of things underneath that's really low level, and in a way, uh, geometry notes is actually very similar to spread chalk. Um, for example. So let's say we have like the default cube here. If you use geometry nodes and then you replace the geometry with um, other mesh primitive, you're gonna get something else, right? Suddenly, default cube is becoming an icosphere. So sphere shock is very, very similar to that. Um, for example, so uh, if I can create a generator like icosphere and as the output is going to be mass viewer and Svertok have over 200 nodes and it's not complete and some of nodes need a bit of work but eventually I think most of them will come into geometry nodes More, uh, although some of them will be still like well, Svertok uh, specific uh, with Svertok for example I can try to make like a generator Let's try something really simple, like regular solid, for example. This will give us just like a pyramid, okay? Um, we can make it dual mesh, etc. Something uh, I'll do something really simple, just inset face. So things like inset, extrude, um, sphere chop already have, but geometry nodes doesn't have it yet. This is individual thickness, depth, okay. So I can control the thickness and the depth, okay. Let's say I just I just want to have like uh, the outside, the wire. So I will use list mask out. So this is a um, very special thing. It goes inside the components and I will try to do the masking the level list needs to be number two and there you go you get this uh, let me save very quickly this is svgnan test so i like to work like this and creating the components now that we have this component called alpha because mass viewer is generating alpha on the fly we can make changes etc. very similar to geometry nodes let's switch to let's switch back to geometry nodes we have this icosphere and I think geometry nodes is really really good for instancing it's like super fast you can instance anything and so we can instance our alpha object so with the alpha object here actually we can we can simply drag and drop it if you want to replace this with anything else, with something else in Spreadshop, you can definitely. For example, Icosphere and Icosphere. I can just plug this in. So we have this. Let's get back to regular solid for now. And I know this is the trick that I've done many, many times. We can replace. We can align to the normal <coughs> face of the icosphere. So we, have, we end up with something like this. And with, uh, with our alpha, actually, this is still like a live object, right? Live from spread chop, but we can also add modifier, such as solidify modifier. And we can even subdivide. So this is a kind of thing that you can do. Uh, for the smoothing, uh, Spread Chalk, we need to turn on Smooth. Select the Mesh Viewer, turn on Smooth Shade, so it's not, it's not on by default. So now we have this, we have our um, geometry nodes with Icosphere, we can kind of connect 
this thing we can change the subdivisions we can still go back to sweat chalk and play around with the thickness and the depth so we have something that looks like like a flower yeah okay cool what can what else can we do with this we can rotate we can animate it in the in it's kind of like it looks like component levels but it's actually working on a point instance if you ever bake it if you ever bake it as alembic it's actually gonna be a real object and it's still an object right so what does this mean so you can you can still play around with the radius and also the subdivisions and also you can for example let's just do something super simple just randomize so attribute randomize we're gonna randomize the vector rotations let's do this yeah I think minus 180 180 the seed can be passed back into the modifier okay so now we have this thing we can animate this using animation nodes right and we can still control the subdivisions so you can make multiple objects each with different complexity you can randomize the seed this is really powerful um only one thing at the moment um maybe soon or sooner or later we can control this using spectro or we can control we have we, we have one single controller to control everything like to drive the stretch of um stretch of nodes for example But let's keep it simple for now we can hide the alpha so this default cube has become something else completely different we can always do the like the scaling also inside geometry nodes so you can see now we have three objects the geometry nodes is being used by three objects so three different user each with different seed and yeah on top of this i think since we are now we have these objects we can use animation nodes of course if you want to i will try animation nodes um also have some neat thing like distribute distribute grid distribute spiral let's use the spiral we have the vector so let's try instancing so this might take a while object okay, transform output you want to use the point position you want to place the objects instance first of all animation nodes if we set it to always it's gonna use a lot of processing power so i just gonna use that Let's grab one of the instance object. This is the number of points goes inside the instance. This is the object and this is the vector position. Okay, it's not using the final result of the object. Okay, now, now it's fixed. Let's create a bunch of them. We can hide the original collections. We have animation nodes object. This is sphere chop object, ge geometry nodes, animation nodes. Okay. It's, it's really cool when <coughs> when they are kind of talking to each other. And we can also randomize the seed and randomize the rotations, etc. Location vector 
Oh, we cannot just connect that. Okay. What else can we do here? We can, okay, I forgot. Randomize the seed. So here, this is a bunch of objects. If you tap W, you can loop through objects and you can control the seed. Let's do that actually. Let's control the seed um, of cube number two. So I should be selecting cube number two. I can randomize the seed. Right click, copy full data path, and then use expression, paste it here. So we can create object. So this is the object coming in. Let's call it OB. And then just play with this expression a little bit. Just edit the expression. So object modifier geometry input number nine should equal seed. So let's create integer seed seed type in the index number of each object as the seed now each one of them is different you can also randomize the radius of course so in order to do that let's copy this right click copy full data path And we want random number, random number, seed coming in, this is a number, and this should be floating value. I have a feeling that this might fail. Okay, it's actually working. I have a feeling that the okay the radius coming in and oh yeah. Property type does not match the input. Okay, this one is a is a strange thing. I think it's very strange that this is giving an error, but this actually should work. But maybe maybe there is something here that's different. Maybe I shouldn't do that. If I reload the file, it should actually work. So now. If we check each of the instance, anyway, the seed is different, so that's one thing, but the radius is the same. And I thought this should actually work. It's giving the error message again. I'm just gonna save it. Reload. Still unhappy. Okay. Unplug. Unplug. Save. Reload. Yeah, but anyway, the idea is that the radius can be randomized. Um, this is also something that you can do using stretch of nodes if you like to. If I select all the instance anyway, I think in theory we should be able to randomize this using Python. But yeah, interesting. This is still a mystery why it doesn't work, but the index 
should work maybe. Yeah. It doesn't work. Anyway, so for now, just worry about the seed. Save. Reload. With the radius, just manually change it. Okay, so that's the whole workflow. Uh, one way you, you can think of how we can use Sphere Chalk with geometry nodes and animation nodes together. Still, yeah, and, and we are only just using the, the basic, like uh, primitives. In theory, you, have, you can do so much more. See, so just make sim simple changes and you get a new thing completely. Very, very, very powerful. So this is uh, an icosphere. Can make it larger, and then with animation nodes, I can control the spiral, spiral. Or circle, keep it simple. Circle. Right, so we have something completely different. Spline mesh grid. And if we switch to geometry nodes, this is also an icosphere that's been piped down into cube number two. Oh. Okay, the subdivision is now cannot be controlled. Interesting. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's uh, just one example. Just simply using primitives and some kind of randomizations and the uh, positioning and the normal of icosphere, you can get something that's unusual like this. Alright, so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.